Hello, I'm Steve, Touch of the Master with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Um, also, Jesus is alive in America because um, that's what he told me to change the YouTube sign, or yeah, sign to whatever. Um, anyhow, I wanted to talk to you today about things the Lord has been dealing with me early, early in the morning for whatever reason. He's waking me up, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. But anyhow, it's God wants our availability not our ability. We get caught up in this head knowledge stuff. It's even scriptural, I'm going to tell you in a second. And it's when God wants our heart. That's why he says in the Proverbs 3, 4, and 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He'll direct your path. The avail our ability leads us down the path of just selfish, lustful, egotistical, self-centered, know-it-all garbage. Kind of, kind of not much different than what Satan tried to do: be higher than, better than God. You know, we want to place ourselves higher than because we know something. People twist the Bible up for that purpose too. Got some revelation you didn't. Well, guess what, guys? It's for everybody. The revelation isn't your own personal interpretation. You may get part of it and it may be, but it's to bring it out to the body of Christ. Read Matthew 20. God's all about the equality piece, guys. Read Proverbs or Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, not higher than equal so I mean the availability is what he did in the Garden of Eden he wants to pick the time place situation whatever you know some of us you know the Lord been told me I'm kind of tired right now but it got a little bit better but about six eight weeks ago he told me he's gonna start waking me up between 12 and 3 man God I'm tired I want to sleep it's broken up and you know, and then I'll get up and, you know, my wife's like, you made coffee last night? I'm like, yeah. Get up, pray, drink my coffee. But all that's God will say. He'll give me scriptures and dreams and just a lot that I haven't even got to putting out there yet. I will. It's still kind of in the raw a little bit, so I'm still formulating some of it. But so anyhow, but, you know, it might be 7 in the morning, might be your prayer time that he wants to talk to you. It might be 6 in the afternoon. It might be just being available for your kids um, to listen to them. Available to, when you see the homeless guy or gal at 7-Eleven, I seem to run into them a lot at 7-Eleven. But feed them. But tell them about Jesus first. We just have to be those vessels available for the meat for the master's use. Read, study your Bible. Who's your source? Should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and his word. Are we available to, to do what he's telling us to do or to not do what he's telling us to do? What if he tells you stop, go, go to the right, go to the left? You know, instead we want to formulate our own plans and, you know, a lot of church is about church building and stuff. Not much different than the world, guys. You know, some of these big retailers and stuff, you know, they work pretty hard to build what they built, but, you know, a lot of it just kind of revolves, seems to be kind of like a racket, honestly. Number game and money game and power and prestige, status and ego. And it's like the equality piece is taken out. Jesus has been taken out. The cross has been taken out. That's why it says, you know, 1 Corinthians 1.18, Foolishness for the for the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. It's the power of salvation to us that are saved. So dive into this, guys. Dive into what God's showing you. Just be available. Here I am, God. You know, like I said, Genesis, Jesus picked the time. He wanted the cool of the day. He's, he's available, are we? 
Are we making ourselves available to him? What's he telling you? You know, how you treat your spouse, how you treat your children, how you treat your, your pastor at church, or how you treat your brother or sister sitting next to you, or don't, or whatever, or people on the street, or, you know, what's... I don't know, we all have purposes. That's why he made us unique, different, millions of us, but instead we want to get polluted and diluted with all this garbage going on all around us. A lot of it's political right now, but, you know, it's just like, man, a bunch of just people screaming and yelling at each other pretty much and, you know, trying to down, downplay you if you, you know, have a Christian stance, if you believe abortion is wrong, if you believe gay marriage is wrong, if you believe it's because we know the truth and the truth has set us free. Doesn't mean we hate everybody. You know, I was, some of the stuff the Lord was telling me to do, was, man, God, you really want me to say that? that look, watch my video on how God sees America concerning abortion. You know, it's, we said, he showed me that, what he showed me in that video, showed me two years ago, I'm like, man, God, I don't really want to, deliver that but you know but then it came out but we're quick to slap labels on people so then I was studying and reading like I said I've been getting scripture in the middle of the night specific scriptures well I had three or four that the Lord had given me and I was going to dive into them so that's what I do I'm like wake up and I got scriptures or dreams or visions I'm like what do you want me to do first God pray read these scriptures Sometimes he'll tell me, read the scriptures and pray about it. Sometimes he'll tell me, pray first. But I always ask him for the direction. You know, okay, I'm up. Here I am. I'm available. Quiet. Nobody's up. Not even a mouse in the house. Nothing. Me and my dog, but... And my kids are all growing up and out of the house, but... So my wife's asleep. She used to be the one getting up. But anyhow, getting off track here a little bit. But anyhow... So it's like, okay, God, some of the stuff that you're showing me is a little bit seemingly going down the road of abrasiveness. I mean, just look at the internet. It's full of a bunch of crap. So, sorry to say that. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I just did. Anyhow, it's distraction to dilute, pollute, toy with your mind, get you to think things that aren't true and all this stuff. And it's like, man, God's trying to cut through all the nonsense and get you to redirect it back into his word. Cut the TV off. Christmas time, make it more about Jesus than the Christmas tree. Sorry. You know, maybe there's more to it than that. Take, 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 a, take your time that you got sucked up into Facebook for three hours and put it into the Bible, reading the Bible. But that's not the abrasive part that I'm talking about, but some of the other stuff that he's telling me, I haven't, I haven't even got to it yet. I'm like, I'm praying about the delivery because I don't want to be the finger pointing guy, accusing, vain rhetoric, do's and don'ts, and all this other stuff. But I was flipping through the Bible. The Lord gave me some specific scriptures. It was about two weeks ago, and I got my answer. That's where your answer is, guys. In his word, spoken, written, your availability. But I was flipping through the Bible, going to a different scripture, and there it was. Ezekiel 33. I'm like, okay, God. Read it. I'm not going to tell you about it yet. It's coming, but it was like, okay, God, I get it now. It kind of fits. It's around, in, around the 22nd chapter, 322, somewhere in there, but that's kind of the one I'm highlighting. But just read it. So, God, God wishes that no man would perish. But we still have to stand up for the truth, guys. The reality of who he really is. Not to be abrasive, hurt people, argue with people, vain debates. It even says that in the Bible, disputers, vain debates. It's like, man, for what? A bunch of nonsense to try to twist up something that's doesn't need to be twisted up. The gospel's pretty simple, guys. He just wants our availability so he can teach it to us. His word, talk to us. It's a two-way street. He wants to communicate with us. 
When we go to pray, he wants to talk, he wants that conversation to exist, that relationship to be built, that trust to be built, that faith, trust, hope, oh, all in him. So anyhow, that's kind of where I'm at. Just, you know, we need to be available. And availability, not our ability. Because we, you know, we'll just kind of, I mean, look around, you know. America's kind of built on our ability. So anyhow, there's a whole, there's a, you know, whole other message to that. I'm not going to go into it too long because I want my main theme to be put aside that time to be available to him. What's his will? What's his way? What's his purpose? What's he trying to show you, teach you, lead, guide, direct you? Maybe to, you know, minister to somebody, help somebody, maybe to peel some stuff out of your own life, maybe to highlight some sin that you got going on that you need to get rid of, attitudes, whatever. Or it may just be to praise and worship him and be thankful for what, what he's doing in your life. I don't know, you know, I mean, but, and it's probably all of it encompassed. He just wants us available, guys. All throughout our day and all throughout, even in our sleep and in our dreams. And, you know, he's calling his people. Come on, come on, come on. In spite of what's going on all around you, it's like a big whirlwind tornado bombshell of everything, you know, turn on the news and in 10 seconds you'll be mad about something. Pick a channel. Pick a, pick a side, whatever. There shouldn't be sides. There isn't a bunch of sides. Anyhow, there's only but one way. Jesus is on the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. I mean, it's right here, guys. It's kind of hidden in plain sight. It's right in front of us mostly, really. That's why I said Matthew 20. Read Matthew 20. Read about the marriage supper of the Lamb. I think it's in, I should have wrote it down, but read that story. You know it. Read it well. Cause there's a lot to it, guys. Read it in the middle of the night or when you get can steal your quiet time. I get it. You maybe have a really hard job, demanding job, a um, bunch of kids or whatever, you know, or just things going on. But you can still find some time to steal away. We find plenty of time to bury our face in Facebook and Instagram and chasing events and going to this revival and that revival or this conference or that conference or this church or that church or this preacher, that preacher. I'm not saying don't gather. That's not what I'm saying. But what God, what's God want you to do? Sometimes you need to just kind of just chill and just, okay, God, here I am. It's me and you. That's what he's really after is your personal relationship with him. So that you can strengthen others in your family, your wife, your children. But you can't if, you, if you're not built upon the rock, if you're not solid yourself, if you don't have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ yourself, you know, things are going to, you're going to be that house built on sand. You're going to fall apart when, when stuff hits. So availability, guys. That's all he wants, our availability. It's like, it's like if, if you got kids, when you come home from work, they don't really care if you got a great paying job or an awesome job or you just made a big, you know, you just bought a new car or a boat or whatever. They, maybe a little bit, you know, the, the boat's fun for them, but they just want to talk with you, see you, tell you about their day. Maybe if they're in, gra in grade school or whatever, they're pretty excited. They wait for you to come home. Availability. God's the same way. He just wants our availability. Our time, sometimes we just, you know, but we got, that's why I said our ability gets us in his head knowledge and twists it up. And sometimes we even, you know, striving and driving and claiming that we're doing something for God. Okay, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe it's just us pushing. That's why the availability is so important because he may tell us something different. He may not. He may, he may he may put a stamp of approval on it. I don't you know, I don't know. I'm not judging your actions. I'm saying I'm giving you direction to be available. Get out of this. 
get into this. Because this, you know, it's, it's pretty polluted, guys. Diluted, and like I said, you know, I, I'll end with this, okay? Lord highlighted his cities. Give me a bunch of cities to go to, but long story, but. So I Googled it a couple days ago. The very next day, or even that night, as soon as I turn on my computer and go to Google something else, all these ads popped up about this diff couple cup in the city's common name and it's in several states. But all these ads popped up for hotels in these cities in different states. Like, man, God, got to kind of get now, now where all this technology is going and, you know, intruding and spying on your life. You know, it's like, where did they, how did that come up? Why would that come up on Google, on my Google page? From the day before when I Googled it. So they got, you know, it's like, man. And we wonder why we get so polluted and diluted and, you know, everything's smartphones and the greatest phone. And it's like, robocalls, you're driving along. You know, it's like, man. Time to kind of shut some of this stuff off. Tune out. Not just tune out. Shut it off. Turn it off. Get back to the Bible. Get back to the Word of God. Get back to your prayer life. Get back to your closet or your garage or wherever it is, wherever your special place is to pray. You may have several different special places to pray. You don't have to go to the church to pray, guys. Be with a bunch of people to pray. Even the Bible, the model prayers, don't do it. You know, don't do it to be seen a man. It's okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't. And you shouldn't get corporate prayer. And sometimes you gain a lot of strength from that. You may be really low or whatever. Need that at different times, different things. Or somebody else might need that. And you might be able to interject into their life. So, you know, that's important too. But don't lose sight of the importance of your personal relationship with Jesus. Because you being strong and him built upon the rock. And his truth, that's when you can help others. When you're weak and meek and or whatever, you know, well, maybe meek's not the right word, but when you when you're just down and kind of got a lot of stuff going on and too many things and some of them not even right, got out your own issues, which we're still gonna all have issues anyhow. I mean, you could still be strong in a word and have issues, but you know. When they're plaguing you, you can't really be a be a blessing to others. Some God's still going to use you. Some You're in the midst of your mess, but He wants to use you more. But you have to be that vessel of meat for the Master's use. What's He telling you? What's the direction He's giving you? I like my early morning prayer because it's quiet, nobody's around, and I just I'm not a lot of distractions. I don't have to turn on the TV, I don't turn on YouTube, I don't turn on, I have to turn on anything. A lot of times I'll take communion, I'll get my Bible out. Okay, God, this is it. You told me this. Let this just penetrate, enter into my heart, and just saturate, soak, and just, I want to see. I want to rightly divide the word. Like I said, I'll be getting I'll be I'll be getting specific scriptures, and you know, memory's not that great, guys. I mean, that's just me. I'm not, you know. It's, so I'll get a scripture, and I'm like, man, I don't even know what it says. I'll have to go look it up. But they'll be specific. Romans eight twenty seven or whatever, you know, that was a good one. That's a whole nother. I'll probably put that out there sometime. But so availability not our ability. We kind of got the cart before the horse. We kind of got it you know, backwards. So anyhow, what's your availability, you know? I mean, last, you know, I mean, are we available to his will? What's he showing us? What's he teaching us? What's he downloading us? What's he guiding us? What's he, whether it's in the word or in our prayer or in our spoken word or in our communication with him, 
Are we really listening? That's why it says at the end of a lot of scriptures, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is to say to the church. The hidden, hidden in plain sight all throughout the Bible, it's not like it's, he's trying to, but eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor have entered into the heart. The things the Lord has for those in store that love him, you know, all down throughout the Bible. Like, the, like I said about let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Well, if you keep reading on it, but he, he's equal. That's like, man, take off of that scripture powerful. And, you know, Jesus is in me. And that is awesome. That is great news. The depth of it is awesome. But he took on the form of a servant, a bond servant, even unto death, even unto the obedience of death. He was available. To do God's plan, not his. But yet he didn't, but yet he considered himself equal with God. But yet he took on all of our sins. Our dirt, trash, mindsets, crap, stuff, things. You know? Like I said, I mean, you don't even have to turn on the news. You can turn on your internet. You can turn on your cell phone. There's pop-ups and things and flashy lights, camera action type situation, you know, to distract you, to fill your mind. But most of it's not things of God. Most of it's just nonsense, trash. Oh, I get it that some people are like, man, we need to be involved in this. We need to be involved in political. We need to be involved in the economy. We need to be involved in this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this. How are we going to interject? Maybe just through prayer, guys. You may be that vessel. You may not. You may just be the, the guy or gal that's praying for that vessel, for that person, for them to make the right decisions, to get into the, you know. I mean, kind of, what's what's God telling you? Pick and choose your battles, you know. But do it accordingly to first availability piece. Is God really showing you that? Or is it just we doing it because we have the ability to do it? Some of us don't have the ability to do it. Some of us do. Some of us, you know, things, you know. But just because we can make things happen or transpire in the world or in things around us doesn't necessarily mean it's God's will. Where'd you get it from? Why are you doing it? The why? Really, honestly, the why? Why are you doing it? What's your purpose and your motive and your reasoning and your I'm not, maybe not even reasoning might not be the right word. What's your, where are you at with it? Where'd it come from? Here or here? When you were listening to the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, God, reading your word, backing it up with what he said, spoken, written. Spoken's real important, guys. Just as important as the written word. The written word's right in front of We can see it and it's kind of tangible and it's, you know, yeah, you got to live by faith, but some of it's, you know, I mean, it's right there. So you can just like peel open your Bible and read it. But the faith and the trust comes in. Are you really reading it? The depth of it and believing it and following through with it. And then are you bouncing it off of God? You know what? What's up, God? What? You know, get, I mean, that was Jesus, the whole plan behind Jesus was that we could have a personal relationship. We could walk boldly before the throne of grace and glory. We could walk in. We could enter into the gate. Hey, hey God, here I am. I need some help, some direction, guidance for raising my kids, my family, my job, where I go to church, where I don't go to church, where I live, where I don't, who I talk to, who I don't, who do I minister, who do I don't to, do I, do I even minister, do I, you know, I mean, What's your will for my life? So anyhow, the availability is very important, guys. I really didn't want to go this long, but sorry, I can't ever seem to not get it. So um, it's got a lot, and that's why I've been writing it down. So I got a couple books out. Um, you want a, you want a couple books for free? One, the last one, it's in the rough rough draft. I won't have it completely finished till the Lord gave me a deadline of uh, June twenty eighth. 
Um, but I got a rough draft of it, but it's an awesome book. Tons and tons of scriptures, really. Um, it's called Christ in You, the Hope of Glory, and how we're his glory and we're his story. If Jesus lives in you, that was God's glory, his son, so that we could enter in to his sonship and do an eternal glory with him, we become his glory. So anyhow, email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Um, I got another book out about all about visions, the visions that the Lord had given me. Um, tons of scriptures in that, because I'd really like to just, that's where I'm headed to, directing you to. I'm just directional. Not about me or the books or some revelation I got that you didn't get. Because you may have got one that I didn't get. I want to hear that too. So anyhow, um, love you guys. See you soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, just, just thanks for tuning in.